You may have seen some viral clips on the internet of some welding. Look at this one right here. It might look kind of decent, but something about this one looks off. Let's watch the full clip right here, shall we? It's just silicone or something, that's fake. And wait for it. Oh no, come on. But looking at this clip on the internet even closer, the funniest thing about it is some of the comments on it. Even though people knew that this one was fake, a lot of people actually thought the weld looked pretty good. Putting aside the fact that this weld is obviously fake, if it were real, is it really as good as some people think? Time to learn. Let's look at this one. I want you to take a look at the welding profile. This refers to the overall shape of the welding. More importantly, how the welding deposit blends into the base material. Here's what we want to see right here. You always want to see a controlled profile and we want to see the edge of the welding creating a smooth transition between filler and base material, specifically in this area right here. Now this area here would be something that I refer to as the gravity affected line. You could probably guess for yourself, but in case you don't know, this is the area where the filler material or the weld is going to be affected by gravity the most. Obviously, it's naturally gonna cause the filler material to be drawn towards this line here. Now, looking at this highlighted area right here, I refer to this as the blended edge. It's also referred to as the toe of the weld, but take a look at how the profile of this one transitions really smoothly into the base material. Looking at the profile of this welding from the side, we can see adequate filler material being deposited, yet it is still keeping this transition between these two materials nice and smooth. Okay, now let's take a look at our other friend here. Looking at the transition like this one that we just talked about, it does not look quite as smooth, does it? This might be the first thing that gives us some indication that if this was a real weld, there could be some things that are now deeply wrong with it. Let's take a look at the profile of this one from the side here. We can see that excessive filler material naturally does build up in the center more. And when this happens, it prevents the edges from blending in adequately or smoothly to the base materials. This is a term that's commonly known as cold lap or incomplete fusion. This is where the filler material is blending into the base material inadequately. This will now be an area that can form cracks under stress later. This can even develop corrosion in some circumstances later down the line as well. Now, another problem is this. When we're doing a weld such as this one, we want to be sure that we penetrate into the welding joint properly. If the filler material is just sitting on the surface, what's gonna happen is not only are we gonna have problems with these blended edges or the toes of the weld here, but we are actually going to block our heat input for getting into the joint and the penetration that we want is going to become insufficient. Okay, let's flip on my Everlast welding machine right now, and I'm gonna weld up a demonstration for exactly what we want. Now, the joint that we looked at here is done around a piece of pipe, but if we were looking at things from the side profile like this here, this is known as a fillet weld. This is where two pieces of material will join together to form a 90 degree angle, and we are doing a weld on the inside corner right here. In this case here, we have a base plate, and then the other piece of base material we're going to use is a piece of pipe. This can obviously be welded in a few different positions, but the video shows somebody doing it in a horizontal position, so that's what we'll do here. Now, all pieces have been cleaned with acetone as well as detailed to get rid of any sharp edges. We wanna make sure that we can tack it together so the pieces meet and form a tight seal. We don't want any gaps or uneven alignment. When we assemble it, we want it roughly square as well. Now, because when I weld this thing, I'm gonna probably tweak and adjust my settings a little bit as I get into it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post my settings at the end of this video. Stick around, stay tuned for those. Okay, now I'm getting set here. You can see I'm actually elevating the joint off the table a little bit here. This is something that I teach in my TIG welding classes online. We go over many little tricks like this to help beginners learn to TIG weld. And like this one here, because it is positioned at 90 degrees in front of us and it's a fillet joint technically, obviously it's gonna be a little bit more awkward because it's going around the circumference of a pipe. Elevating this off the table is gonna give me great visibility and I can feed my filler material a little more comfortably. Now, before I get going, here's another massively important thing that I do when welding around pipe that'll help you out a ton. Because your hand is notoriously going to be in your face when trying to reach around a corner, instead of using a normal piece of filler rod, do this instead. You're gonna do a small bend on the filler material just like this here. You're then gonna be able to feed around the corner so that you are getting the angle that you want. However, your hand is nowhere near your vision and out of your face. This is a massive hack. I definitely recommend to try this one out if you haven't tried it already. 
Okay, now I'm comfortable, I'm all set up. Let's get ready to weld and let's rip it. Here we go, lighting up at the start here. I'm getting a good hot start, but I'm also adding a little extra filler at the beginning here. Adding a couple extra dabs of filler is gonna help to prevent overheating at the start, despite me using a little bit of extra heat to get it going. Once my profile is filled up enough in relation to the amount of heat that I'm using, off I go, I will start traveling. Each step I take as I'm traveling, I am making sure I watch the edges of the welding toes, especially the bottom edge, the gravity affected line. I wanna make sure that this stays nice and blended. I don't want any lack of fusion, which again can be caused by excessive filler material or gravity pulling the filler to the bottom edge. Now, as I'm finishing and restarting different passes going around the pipe here, I wanna make sure that my starts blend in and match the size and shape of the previous stop. Each tie-in has to be perfect or penetration will be interrupted in between passes. Now, as I keep welding on this one, the joint is gonna be getting hot and spicy. It is much hotter than it was at the start, so I'm gonna be adding a touch more filler to each step that I take, as well as possibly backing off my heat a little bit. When I finish my pass, I back off nice and controlled. I leave a nice little button at the end to keep things nice and organized and connected. I thoroughly post flow my tungsten. It is all about the finish, people. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, going back to look real quick at the example we're trying to outdo here, we can see that the edges on this one look way better. The filler material is blending in super smooth at the toes. We do not see any incomplete fusion. And looking at the gravity affected line on the bottom, we can see for sure that the filler material has not spilled out too low on the bottom edge. The transition is really good with this one. Now, when you're doing something like this, you have to be careful with the amount of filler material that you are using. We already talked about what happens when you use too much filler material, but the same can obviously be said for using not enough filler material. The profile or shape of the weld can fall hollow or concave. This can lead to a welding flaw called undercutting, especially with other welding positions such as vertical welding. Now, here's another really important detail that we wanna look at here. What I'm actually doing here is I'm looking at the distance that we see here from each step taken along a welding pass. This is a term that I teach in my program called stepping distance. If this distance is too far apart, we're gonna see craters form in between each step. We want each step to cover roughly one half to two thirds of the previous puddle. You can see my example here has a stepping distance that is nice and tight together. Each puddle is covered adequately as I move along and add filler material. But check this out, looking at our fake weld here, I gotta say, the stepping distance looks pretty good. Even though this is fake as hell to the person that did this, nice job with your stepping distance, well done. So you've now seen me break down this fake weld on the internet and we learned a ton from it, even though it was done with silicone. The only real question that remains at this point is, can I weld with silicone as good as this guy? Quick trip to the hardware store again. Gotta get my silicone welding supplies. And here we go, I am all set up here. My joint is positioned just how we talked about properly on the table. I can see clearly and my hands have good movement around. Let's go. Flashing up here with my weld, I'm off to a good start. We can see that there's a good amount of welding deposit here on the edges. And my stepping distance as I travel along is nice and consistent. What I'm trying to do at this point is just keep up my comfort and consistency. And as I'm approaching the end and I'm finishing up things, I want to keep everything nice and controlled. And then there we go. Now, I gotta add my finishing touches to it as well. Here we go, shake the can up, let's go. What do you think, looks decent? How did I do? Did my silicone welding stack up well enough with this one on the internet? Be sure to let me know in the comments below how I did with my silicone welding. Go hit the free classes that you can take online for TIG welding on my website. Yes, they are absolutely completely free. You can take them at your own convenience, whatever you want, they're on demand. And again, this video that you're watching here today is never in any way meant to throw any shade at anybody. We look at stuff like this on my channel once in a while and use it as an opportunity to learn more about TIG welding. And in doing so, we hopefully have some fun doing it as well. Go do some welding today, have fun. My name is Dusty James, Phil and Chill, we'll talk soon, peace. Peace.